Welcome to Lecture Online and now we're going to do a little bit more challenging example of how to do a double integral. In this case we're going to use a double integral technique to find the volume. The volume defined by a plane that is defined by 3x plus 2y plus z equals 12. And a good way to picture what that looks like is to go ahead and set two of the variables equal to zero. For example x and y. When x and y are equal to zero we're at the origin right here and z would be equal to 12, which puts us right up here. We know the plane will go through that point. If we now set y and z equal to 0, then we know that 3x equals 12, therefore x equals 4. So when y and z equals uh, 0, then x equals 4 right here, so we know the plane goes to that point. And finally, when you set x and z equal to 0, we get 2y equals 12, so y equals 6. So again, when x and z equals 0, y equals 6. And so therefore, if you connect those three points like that, that gives you a feel of what that plane looks like. So we're trying to find the volume bound by that plane, by the, uh, z equals 0, which is the xy plane, by y equals negative 2, which is right back here, by y equals 3, which is over here, by x equals 0, which is the yz plane, and by x equals 1, which is 1 in front of the yz plane. So we have this this rectangular shape going up until it reaches this plane right here. So sometimes it helps to go ahead and, and draw this like this. So we have this like that. So we have this rectangular like that. Uh, so that see. probably will go like this, like this. So we have this rectangular, uh, rectangular shaped region. And I'm trying to make it look just right there we go and I'm probably like so there I didn't do too bad of a job to try and make it look like something and of course the uh, this the top will be slanted because it'll be up against this uh, plane which is at an angle going this way uh, but you can see that it's kind of a rectangular shaped object at the bottom and then it's up against the plane and so this will probably continue but I don't know exactly what that looks like so I'll just leave it like that and so now we're trying to find the volume of that bounded by the plane and z equals 0, y equals negative 2, y equals 3, x equals 0, x equals 1. There it is. How do we do that? Well, we first need to find the dv, a small little volume element. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small dx times dy and bring that all the way up to the top of that. So we have a small little rectangular box section right here that represents our dv. And so the dv would be the area of the base, which is equal to dx times dy times the height. And we can say that it goes from here to the plane right there, and we're going to call that z. So when we hit the plane, it'll be whatever the z value is of that plane, no matter where this little dv element goes. And since z can be expressed in terms of x and y, we could then say, well, we could take this equation and we could write this as z is equal to 12 minus 3x minus 2y. And we plug that into here. Our volume element dv can then be written as uh, 12 minus 3x minus 2y multiplied times dx times dy. And that would be the volume of this little very tiny skinny rectangular box that goes all the way from the xy plane to when it hits this plane defined by the equation 3x plus 2y plus z equals 12. Yes, not a good idea. So this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, and this is the z-axis. There we go. All right. Now to find the total volume like that, we're first going to integrate that in the x direction, and then we integrate in the y direction. Then we get the total volume, or we can first go the y direction and the x direction. Doesn't really matter. Either way should work just fine. So we can then say to find the total volume, let me write that here. So the volume is going to be equal to the double integral. If we're going to do x first, we're going to integrate from x equals 0 to x equals 1. That's this, the width of the strip from 0 to 1. And for, in the y direction, we're going to integrate from y equals negative 2 to y equals 3. Negative 2 to 3. Remember, these were x limits and these were y limits. And so it doesn't hurt to write down x and y in the limits so you keep them straight. And then we plug in our dv, so the integral dv. And so this is equal to the double integral, um, y equals negative 2 to 3, x equals 0 to 1. And instead of dv, we're going to write what dv is equal to, which is 12 minus 3x minus 2y times dx dy. 
And so since I've written it like this, let's go ahead and integrate over the x variable first. It doesn't really matter which way we do it, but it's already written like that, so let's integrate that. Now remember, when we integrate over the x variable, any other variable like y is just like a constant. So 2y two, two is a constant, 12 is a constant. Here's the only variable in our first integral. So this becomes equal to the integral from y equals negative 2 to 3. And when we integrate this, remember that's just a constant, so 12 dx integrated becomes 12 times x, minus 3x, that becomes minus 3x squared over 2, and then minus 2y times x, again, 2y is some, simply a constant, so 2y times dx is 2yx, and then the whole thing evaluated from 0 to 1, and we can't forget our differential dy. So now we can go ahead and plug in the ones and the zeros for our variable x. Notice when we plug in zero, we get zero, so we don't have to plug in the lower limit. So this is equal to the integral from negative 2 to 3 of 12 times 1 minus 3 times 1 squared over 2 and minus 2y times 1. I just go ahead and write it like that so you can see what we're plugging in. We're plugging in the upper limit for the variable x. And the whole thing times dy. Let's go up here to finish the problem. All right, let's clean that up a little bit. So we have 12, and here we have, uh, this is 1, and 3 halves. So 12 minus 1 and a half, that would be 10 and a half. So the integral of negative uh, 2 to 3, uh, this would be 10.5 minus 2y evaluated uh, no, integrate it over dy. All right, we can't evaluate it yet because we haven't integrated it yet. So this would be 12 minus 1 and a half. 12 minus 1 and a half is 10 and a half. And then we have minus 2y, and that goes over here, times dy. Now we're ready to integrate it over the y limit. So this becomes equal to 10.5y minus 2y squared over 2. The 2's cancel out, and this is evaluated from minus 2 to 3. We plug in the upper limit, we get 10.5 times 3 minus, here we get 3 squared minus, and I like to use parenthesis or brackets, plug in the lower limit. So we get 10.5 times a minus 2, and that would be minus, when plugging a minus 2 over here, minus 2 quantity squared, we get that. All right, now we need to do a little bit of arithmetic to work all this out. So this is equal to 3 times this gives me 31.5 minus 9. The minus times the minus becomes plus, so plus 21. And then finally we get minus times a minus. That becomes a plus, and minus 2 squared becomes a plus. That would be plus 4. All right, we're almost there. So this is equal to... Uh, let's see, minus 9, 21, that becomes 12, plus 4 is 16, so 31.5 plus 16. Let's see if I got that right. Uh, 21 minus 9 gives me 12, plus 4 is 16, and that would be 47.5, and that would be the total volume, or whatever units, of that region right there. And that's how we do that. So this was not a bad one, but the hard part was to visualize what this looks like, visualize the rough volume we're trying to integrate. I know that the top part is not straight like this. This probably will go, the top part will probably go along like this. It probably looks a little bit, a lot more like that. So that you can see that the, that the uh, dv, the, the volume element, goes right up to the plane, wherever the plane is, intersects with that. The x limits are from 0 to 1, the y limits are from negative 2 to 3. You plug in those limits, you find your dv element by taking the area of the base times the height. Area of the base times the height, the height is defined by the z portion of that plane, and since z can be expressed in terms of x and y, we then only have, whoop, we only have two integrals um, over the x and the y variables that we can then integrate, and that's how we do that.